guys. It's that time of year. You know, spring is busy planting and fall is planting is busy cleaning up. And I always divide my gardens up into about five different sections. I call this garden up here the rain barrel garden. I don't know why. I'm sure it come up. Oh, well, it's right by the rain barrel. Right so. by the rain barrel. But I also combine the rain barrel garden with the hillside terraced areas because they're minimal cleanup and minimal planting. And then the, the large perennial sun, sunny border is divided into two sections. The have uh, the island bed right at the bottom of the stairs. Then the shade garden is one of its own. So that way, like, I will take today and I'm going to clean up this uh, rain barrel garden because the peonies are ready to be cut back. I have some lavender I want to tie up and get dried. Um, but then tomorrow I'll go down and I'll do half of the perennial border, the sunny border. Then maybe Friday, because it's a busy week, I'll get to the island bed and look at the shade border, which doesn't really require much this time of year. Um, and that way you don't get overwhelmed. If you're a new gardener, it can be overwhelming to think, oh golly, trees, well, you have all this garden to weed and to cut back? No, I break it up into sections. And it may take me an hour and a half today to do everything I want to do. Um, I'm going to be out here an hour and a half? No, we're not. Okay. But what I'm doing here, because there's some peonies down in the other garden, I'll cut those back. But I'm just going to show you guys how I cut these back. And uh, you can wait till the first frost, which is ours is the end of October. But mine have two things going on. You can see the powdery mildew on the leaves, this white stuff. It won't kill your plant. It's just really ugly. And it's caused from high humidity, a lot of rain, which we've had. And we've had we've that. We've had that, particularly July and August. Then you'll notice these black spots on the leaves, which I think this is a better example down here on Sierra Bernhardt. And this is either gray mold or a botrytis, botrytis, B-O-T-R-Y-T-I-S, botrytis. And again, it uh, is ugly and it won't necessarily kill your plant. Maybe in a new beginning one, you want to be cautious of this, but I don't spray or do anything for it. This time of year, I'm just going to cut them back. None of these plants will go in my compost. No. Same thing with the roses. We get that black spot. We get certain things on plants that I don't spray anything. I, I've tried using sprays. I don't like it. it it doesn't make a difference in our in zone six here in west virginia we have high humidity rain we've had a lot of heat but it didn't stay dry and hot and so there you have it they also say if you don't have good circulation that can cause this powdery mildew but you know this is up on a hillside so it's it's not a circulation problem because these plants are separated sarah bernhardt this is my um i think white heritage that was carl rosenfield you know, they're separated and they're not blocked by a lot. So for me, it's just moisture. Moisture is going on. So anyhow, what you do this time of year, and I like to do it now because it looks so ugly and to get ahead of time, um, and it's late September. What you do, you come down to the base and you cut two to three inches above your stems. It's this easy. This, this easy. It's like a little haircut. Just like a haircut. Cut it back. And... Uh, like I said, these will not go in compost. They just get cut back. You can also, if you choose to, and I may do that later, grab a bucket of compost and throw on top of the plant. Usually I just wait till spring. Do any type of composting or fertilization. And usually it's just some plant tone or some compost thrown on top. And if I feel like it today, at the end of the day, if I'm in my compost pile, I'll bring some compost and throw it on top of this to keep the soil looking good and any little weeding I'm going to do too. So that's all you do. You just cut them back about two to three inches, leave them alone. And uh, then in the spring at the first sign of blossoms or not blossoms, but leaves, that's when you want to put a little fertilizer on them, a little compost and uh, let them bloom for you. So it's that easy. And I'm going to go through all the, the ones in the, I think I have three clumps down in the main perennial border and I'm going to do that today. The other tip I want to give you is when you're through cutting off any plant that has any kind of sign of disease, I have a little cup of Clorox water that I keep with me when I'm doing these kinds of end of season chores. A little Clorox water, dilute Clorox. I'll wa wash my tools, whatever I've used, wipe them off before I trim off a plant that doesn't have any problems. Because the last thing you want is to be cross, 
determined cross contaminating your plants. Um, what so was that again? Cross contaminating. Contaminating. What I cross contaminating? Yeah. That that's my word for the day. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Put it in uh, if you're playing uh, words with friends. Yeah, you might try, but I think it's probably and see if you guess you any, be challenged. To, yeah. Anyhow, so you're gonna you know just keep. It's no big deal if you have those little um, septic wipes. That would work too. Just wipe your um, your tools off so that you don't uh, contaminate another plant. So that's a job I'm going to do today. Clean off the peonies, not in my compost. And the other nice thing I want to do today, if you have lavender, it's time to start. I cut blooms all season long because I love, 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 love to dry lavender. It's so easy. This is the hide coat lavender, and uh, it has bloomed all season for me. If you keep them cut, they will bloom for you. And so easy to dry. They don't lose their color. They stay fragrant. And um, so I want to cut all these off because I put this, I think, you know, anyone who knows me, they know I always like to give a little lavender wrapped around their present. I'm not big on bows, but a little raffia, some lavender. I love it. And I'm also going to be cutting... I may take time and cut some of my lemon balm for some dried lemon balm tea. It's it's delicious, and why I don't do more of that, I don't know. But since I have these little scissors out, I'm going to be tying these up in bunches. I may do the same, but with the lemon balm, I'm probably going to dry it in the microwave. Um, the lavender, I won't. The lemon balm, I will, because I, um, I do my basil, my oregano, um, my herbs I dry in the microwave on some paper towels and someday I, maybe I can do maybe I did a video on that I don't know but it's so easy to do you you know about every 30 you put it on paper towels and then you put the microwave with a towel over top of it for 30 seconds until they're dry and then you store them in a, a glass jar which I, I save glass jars just for that reason now some of these even though they look a little dried out, I go ahead and cut all my blooms and dry them. So that's what I'm, I'm doing right here. And all I do is I take a bunch, about three to five of them, and take a nice long string. Because these get put in the basement on a hanger, although I do have a drying rack now that I need to install. Then I'm going to hang these up uh, on my drying rack or a hanger, depending on what I get it done first. And it doesn't take long. And I just love to do this. And if you have it, it's well worth it. Now, the other thing I want to talk about is, um, I will do, tie all these right now. That's an off camera thing. But I did this spring, I cut my uh, lavender back. These are old plants. And gotcha. they, were, they were getting really woody. And if I have a picture, I'll try and find one and put it up there. But what I did in the spring is uh, once they started to green up again, I would go down to where the woody part was. And you know, here's a piece I cut way back. But if there was a green spot beginning there, I would cut, cut it back to wherever there was a new leaf beginning. And they have really filled out. Um, and if you have some woody lavender that is getting old and looking not well kept, um, there's other videos out there to show you how you do it, but you don't want to do it in the winter. You don't cut your lavender back in the winter or it'll die off. You wait till spring when you see the first growth, and then you can trim back the, the dead and the ugly, and then it'll it'll leaf out. I, I, I wasn't expecting it to get this bushy after I did such a haircut in it last spring, but I'm so Well, it looks nice, it. though. It does, and it smells so good. And the other thing I love is I've loved putting my thyme up in this garden, too. Uh, we I had some time yesterday with our yes, dinner, didn't we? In the fall of the year, I like to use thyme in... Reggie made a turkey yesterday, and I did roasted vegetables, and that thyme adds that autumn taste, doesn't it? Nice. It adds it was that, nice. You know, you want to put it in your soups, and I'm so lazy, I won't walk down, I don't know how many more steps it is to the other garden where I have thyme planted under the rose, and get it, but I'm so thankful I put it up here. And they're perennial. The one thing about your thyme herb, it's perennial. And uh, so I can cut on this all winter long. And it's so nice to have it. 
I just took out my one basil plant there. I'm going to be drying. I do dry my basil plant leaves too. It was a real, well, it's behind Reggie in the inside. I should, I'm not going to waste my time and go get that for this video. But it looked like a stalk with some leaves on it and it was done. So I'm going to pick all the leaves off and get that dried today too. Um, the one thing about, um, I guess that's what I'm going to, that's it. That's what I'm doing today. I'm cutting back the peonies. I will get some lemon balm. And uh, maybe I'll go down there right now and see how I cut back my lemon balm too. We'll meet you down in the garden. So this is the lemon balm. I, I love being down here around the anemones. They look so pretty. And I am going to get them divided as we can have some out in there. But here's the lemon balm. And it's the mint family. And I'm going to go down in here and cut the, some of these stems. I'm going to cut these blooms off. I'm not going to be drying them. I just want these nice leaves. And they say, you know, I like it for its flavor, but they say it's good for anxiety, memory, uh, sleep, but it smells so delicious. So I'll cut some of these and I will take them inside. And while I'm tying herbs and thinking about herbs and drying my basil, I will get some lemon balm done too. So this is the time of year you wanna go out and you want to start cutting things that you know you want to dry. Now, I could tie these. I'll just take a second and show you that. You could also tie these and just like I did with the lavender, just tie these up, hang them to dry, and in a couple weeks, they would be dry. But <clears throat> if I want tea right away, I'm gonna go ahead and put it on a paper towel in the microwave and in probably 60 seconds, I'll have dried lemon balm to make some tea because Again, I like hot tea in the in this time of year, not in the summer. Just that easy, people. It's not hard to, ta-da. So I will do that. That's my day today, playing in the garden. So thanks for watching Gardening on the West Fork, Zone 6. It is time to start cleaning things off little by little. Divide your gardens up into sections. It'll make it simpler. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.